So we have a function from capital X to capital Y, and we have two subsets, A, B, contained in Y, and we have to prove this equality. So proof. Maybe before we start the proof, let me go over what this notation means. So if you have, say, a subset, K of capital Y, so this is the idea of what this means. Um, what is this set here? Well, this is called the inverse image or the pre-image of K under F. So it's the set of all of the X's in the domain of F. So here, capital X is the domain such that f of x is in k. So it's all of the x's that get mapped to k. So let's look at a picture. So if this is capital X and this is capital Y, this is your domain, so domain, and this is your codomain. And here's capital K. It's a subset of Y. Okay, so what is the inverse image? Well, here's f. It takes x to y, and the inverse image of k under f is the set of all of the x's in the domain that actually get mapped to k. So that's all it is, right? If you think about it, that's exactly what it says. If x is in the inverse image, x is in the domain, and it gets sent to k because f of x is in k. Okay, let's go ahead and prove this. So just to rewrite what we have to show, we claim that the inverse image of A intersect B is equal to the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B. So to show two sets are equal, we have to show that they are subsets of each other. So take any x in the inverse image of A intersect B. Well, what does this mean? This means that F of X is in A intersect B. That is by definition of the inverse image. Well, what does it mean to be in the intersection? So then F of X is in A and F of X is in B. That's exactly what it means for f of x to be in A intersect B. Well, f of x being in A, this means that x is in the inverse image of A. And f of x being in B means that x is in the inverse image of B. So x is in the inverse image of A, and x is in the inverse image of B. So this means that x is in the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B. So we showed that the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side. So we showed that the inverse image of A intersected with B is contained in the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B. Pretty easy. Now we have to show the other direction. We'll take an x in the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B, and we'll show that our x is in the inverse image of A intersect B. So take x in the right-hand side. So x is in the intersection, so that means that x is in the inverse image of A, and x is in the inverse image of B. So because x is in the inverse image of A, that means f of x is in A. And this statement here means f of x is in B. So we have f of x in A and f of x in B. So f of x is in the intersection. So f of x is in the intersection, A intersection B. Going kind of fast, but it's a pretty easy proof. And so what does that mean? That means X is in the inverse image of A intersect B. So this shows the other inclusion. So this shows 
that the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B is contained in the inverse image of A intersect B. So we've proved both inclusions, so therefore the inverse image of A intersect B is equal to the inverse image of A intersected with the inverse image of B. So I kind of rushed through that, uh, just trying to keep the video length short because I kind of derailed at the beginning with the explanation, but I suppose you can always uh, pause it. I hope that helps.